How do exchange rates actually impact trade? Suppose Indonesia produces cotton shirts and Brazil produces cars and that prices are set in the currencies of the exporting countries. Shirts are sold in Indonesian rupees and cars are sold in Brazil rials. And importantly, these prices are sticky. That is, they do not adjust quickly to changes in demand and supply conditions. Now, if the rupees value falls, that means that more rupees are necessary to buy a real. So now Indonesia shirts become cheaper in Brazil and Brazil's cars become more expensive in Indonesia. This means that Indonesia would buy less cars from Brazil and Brazil would buy more shirts from Indonesia. So the rupiah's depreciation relative to the real would improve Indonesia's trade balance while weakening Brazil's, all else being equal. However, as shown in my own research and this year's external sector report, exchange rates do not always work in this way, at least not in the near term. The reason is that many of the prices of internationally traded goods are fixed in US dollars, even when the United States is not one of the trading partners, such as in our example of trade between Indonesia and Brazil. One reason for this is that exporters use imported inputs, and when these input costs are sticky in dollars, they have an incentive to price in dollars. The wide use of the dollar is a key feature of international trade. In fact, the share of world imports that are invoiced in US dollars is about four times the share of world imports by the US. And for exports, this ratio is about three times. Now let us use our earlier example to understand the implications of US dollar invoicing for trade. If the price of shirts and cars are invoiced in US dollars, the rupiah real exchange rate becomes less relevant. Instead, it's the value of the rupiah or real relative to the US dollar that matters. Now, if suddenly more rupiahs are needed to buy US dollars, then Indonesia would buy fewer cars from Brazil. Meanwhile, since the price of Indonesia shirts abroad is set in US dollars, the lower value of the rupiah does not translate into more shirt exports to Brazil. Therefore, the extensive use of the US dollar in trade means that export volumes in the selling country do not react much to a depreciation of its currency, and the main effect comes through lower imports. That said, our own work shows that exports become more sensitive over time. As time passes, Indonesia's export prices in US dollars adjust downward, as the depreciation makes such a pricing strategy affordable. This means that with time, exports do increase, and the effects of a depreciation on trade become more even. That is, both exports and imports contribute to the improvement in Indonesia's trade balance. So what are the implications of these findings? Since the payoff of exchange or flexibility may be more limited in the near term. Some countries may need demand and structural policies to support exports and growth, even where exchange rates are flexible. For example, exchange rate mechanisms could be strengthened with policies that alleviate exporters' capacity constraints through improvements in access to credit and transportation infrastructure. We welcome you to dig deeper into our analysis of these issues which are featured prominently in this year's external sector report.